because life is often unfair, great fame and great recognition, do not always go hand in hand with great accomplishments, history is chock full of figures who played oversized roles in shaping key events in their days, events that influence our very lives to this day, but who are widely unrecognized or are greatly underappreciated. Following are 20 fascinating things about some of history's underappreciated people. Number 20. The Serb who came to America with four cents and big dreams. In 1884, Nikola Tesla, 1856-1943, a Serb from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, arrived in America with four cents in his pocket. Some poems and blueprints for making a flying machine, the flying machine was never built, but by 1900 Tesla had revolutionized the world by effectively harnessing the power of electricity. Electricity had been around for some time, but it took Tesla to make the things that made electricity an everyday part of everyday life, among other things, he invented fluorescent lights, electric generators, the FM radio, spark plugs, remote controls, robots, and the Tesla coil that is used to transmit radio and TV broadcasts. He was also a character, one could say with quirks that made him the epitome of a made-for-Hollywood mad scientist. Number 19. Getting shafted by Thomas Edison. With a record 1,093 patents to his name, Thomas Edison, the Wizard of Menlo Park is often described as the world's most prolific inventors, in reality most of Edison's inventions were either by people he hired and whose inventions he then patented, in his own name, or by strangers who had nothing to do with him, but whose inventions Edison simply stole. Nikola Tesla was among those in the former category, shortly after Tesla's arrival in the US, Edison hired the brilliant but new immigrant to redesign his electrical generators and perfect his light bulb, promising him $50,000 if he did so, Tesla did so but when he asked for the $50,000 he had been promised. Edison laughed it off, telling him, Tesla you just don't understand our American humor, when you become a full-fledged American, you will appreciate an American joke. Number 18. Switching over to Edison's rival. After Thomas Edison screwed him over, Nikola Tesla took his talents to Edison's greatest business rival, George Westinghouse, nowadays, alternating current, AC, lights up our homes and workplaces, and powers up our appliances through wall sockets, by contrast direct current. DC is relegated mostly to batteries. In the 19th century, however the issue was undecided, and powerful interests fiercely competed to decide whether AC or DC would dominate the world, AC was supported by Westinghouse, who pushed it as the best means to bring electricity to the masses, on DC's side was Thomas Edison, there was serious money at stake, and in hindsight considering that Tesla's talent settled the issue in favor of AC, Edison might have had cause to regret screwing his former employee over. Number 17. Paying Edison back. Direct current, DC, is crappy when compared to alternating current, AC, because DC is weaker and can only be transported short distances, however Thomas Edison had already invested millions in DC, and he was not about to let the upstart AC flush that investment down the drain if he could help it. Unfortunately for Edison, the former employee whom he had screwed over, and in whose face he had laughed, ended up playing a key role in flushing that DC investment away, Nikola Tesla working for AC advocate George Westinghouse, basically designed the modern AC electricity supply system that ensured its easy delivery and use, in so doing Tesla ensured the defeat of Thomas Edison and his DC plan in what came to be known as the War of the Currents. Number 16. The Quirky Genius In his personal life, Nikola Tesla was an unusual character, in addition to being a celibate, he hated human hair jewelry, and anything that could not be divided by three, he had to count his steps to make sure that they were divisible by three otherwise or if he lost count, he would have to do his journey all over again. Tesla also had a phobia of round things, so powerful was his fear of round items, that he once got a fever from looking at a peach. Number 15. The Death Ray and WMDs Tesla also claimed to have invented a death ray that could explode, or vaporize things at a considerable distance, many suspected that he was responsible for the 1908 Tunguska event, which flattened thousands of square kilometers of Siberian tundra with an explosion 3,000 times, more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped over Hiroshima. In reality Tesla had nothing to do with the Tunguska event, and there is no evidence that he had ever invented a usable death ray, however after Tesla's death, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover had all his papers seized, out of fear that others might use them to develop weapons of mass destruction. 
Number 14. Revolutionizing the world. In addition to his key role in developing readily usable alternating current, a scientific contribution that by itself revolutionized the world, Nikola Tesla had a long list of other major inventions, he had over 700 patents in 26 countries. That included, X-ray devices, electric generators, electric arc lamps, fluorescent lights, spark plugs, robots, remote controls, bladeless turbines, the Tesla coil and FM radio. Indeed the modern world as we know it would be impossible without Tesla, as the American Institute of Electrical Engineers put it, were we to seize and eliminate from our industrial world the results of Mr. Tesla's work, the wheels of industry would cease to turn our towns would be dark. Number 13. The Underappreciated Visionary In addition to his practical inventions, Nikola Tesla was a visionary who foresaw inventions that were beyond the state of science and engineering in his day, but which he predicted would become a reality someday. He foresaw cell phones, artificial intelligence, lasers, vertical lift aircraft, the wireless transmission of energy and radar, take radar. Its inventor Emil Gerardo credited his work to plans drawn by Tesla decades earlier, to transmit radio signals and receive their reflections on a fluorescent screen. Unfortunately, while a great genius and inventor, vastly superior to the more famous Thomas Edison, Tesla was a poor businessman, an outsider who spoke with an accent Tesla got taken advantage of repeatedly by shrewder entrepreneurs, so while Edison capitalized on his inventions and those of others to live and die in the lap of luxury, Tesla died in poverty in 1943, flitting between a series of NYC hotels and leaving behind unpaid bills. Number 12. The Guy Who Saved Western Europe From The Huns Few people have been as underappreciated as Flavius Aetius, 391-454, and not just in contemporary popular culture, where Aetius is unknown to most, including many history buffs, he was also underappreciated by his contemporary government, which demonstrated its ingratitude in the most visceral way possible, rewarding his valiant efforts on its behalf by murdering him. A Roman statesman and the last great general of the Western Roman Empire, Aetius was born into a military family, and spent part of his youth as a hostage of the barbarian Visigoths, and later the Huns, living amongst the barbarians gave him valuable insider knowledge and insights, which came in handy, it helped Aetius stop Attila the Hun, ruler of a nomadic empire that spanned Eastern and Central Europe, and known as the scourge of God for his depredations, from overrunning Western Europe. Number 11. The Terrifying Huns During his reign, 434-453, Attila the Hun menaced the civilized world invaded Persia, terrorized the Eastern and Western Roman empires, plundered the Balkans, and extorted vast sums of gold from the Romans, in 440 he crossed the Danube, plundered the Balkans and destroyed two Roman armies, the Roman emperor admitted defeat, and Attila extorted from him a treaty that paid 2,000 kilograms of gold up front, plus an annual tribute of 700 kilograms of gold each year, in 447 Attila returned to the Balkans, which he ravaged until he reached the walls of Constantinople before recoiling. In 450, the Western Roman Emperor's sister sought to escape a betrothal to an old aristocrat whom she disliked. By begging Attila's help and sent him her engagement ring, Attila interpreted that as a marriage proposal accepted and asked for half of the Western Roman Empire as dowry. When the Romans balked, Attila invaded visiting his usual depredations, and Aetius was put in charge of organizing the resistance. Number 10. Imperial Ingratitude for Beating Back Attila By the time Attila the Hun invaded Western Europe, the Western Roman Empire had been reduced to a shell of its former self and lacked the military means to stand up to the Huns on its own, so Aetius formed an alliance with the barbarian Visigoths, promising them a homeland of their own in southwestern France in exchange for fighting off the Huns alongside the Romans. At the climactic Battle of the Catalonian Plains in 451, Aetius and the Visigoths defeated Attila, bringing his devastating invasion of Western Europe to an end. Aetius' success aroused the jealousy of the Western Roman Emperor Valentinian III, who felt intimidated by his formidable general. On September 21, 454, Aetius was delivering a report to the emperor, when Valentinian leapt up from his throne, and out of the blue, accused the general of drunken depravities, then before the bewildered Aetius knew what was happening, the emperor and a co-conspirator hacked the startled general to death with a sword. Number 9. The American Revolution's Undercover Heroine During the American Revolution, the Patriots' most important spy network, 
The Culper Ring owed a great debt to Anna Smith Strong of Setauket, New York. The ring's leader Abraham Woodhull frequently traveled to New York City under the cover of his occupation as a farmer delivering produce, or to visit his sister who lived in the city. While in New York, he gathered information about British units in the city, their dispositions, and any news he overheard from talkative loyalists and British officers. Close questioning by inquisitive British soldiers during one of those visits drove home to Woodhull the deadly risk he was running. To reduce his exposure and the frequency of his travels, he began leaning more on recruiting spies in the city and using their reports instead of his personal observations. Anna Strong helped speed up the transmission of the gathered intelligence. Number eight, the Laundry Code. Abraham Woodhull gathered intelligence from NYC and took it to Setauket on Long Island. He had delivered it to Caleb Brewster, a courier and smuggler, who delivered it to Major Benjamin Talmadge, who handed it to George Washington. It was a time-consuming process that was eventually shortened by using couriers to collect the information in New York and speedily get it to Setauket, 55 miles away. Anna Strong used her laundry as a code to coordinate between Brewster and Woodhull. When Brewster was ready to pick up Woodhull's reports, Anna would hang a black petticoat in her laundry as a signal to Woodhull. Woodhull would then finish compiling a report and stash it in a prearranged hiding spot in one of six coves near Setauket. Anna would then hang up white handkerchiefs to dry their number corresponding to the number of the cove, where Woodhull had stashed the report. Brewster would then go to the correct cove, pick up the report and deliver it across the Long Island Sound. Number 7. Ancient Athens Savior Few states can rival ancient Athens when it comes to routine demonstrations of ingratitude towards saviors and heroes, Miltiades, 550-489 BC, who led Athens in defeating a Persian invasion in 490 BC at the Battle of Marathon, was one of the earliest examples. A decade before the events of the movie 300, Marathon was an upset victory against a numerically superior force, which saved Athens from Persian conquest. Miltiades was born into a wealthy aristocratic family that owned a private kingdom in the Trisonese, today's Gallipoli Peninsula, which Miltiades inherited in 516 BC. When Darius I of Persia invaded the Trisonese in 513 BC, Miltiades surrendered and became a Persian vassal. In 499 BC the Ionian Greeks of Asia Minor revolted against Persian rule. Miltiades marched against the rebels, but secretly supported their cause and helped funnel them aid from Athens. Number 6. Athens' aid to the Ionian rebels leads to a Persian invasion. Athens sent an expeditionary force which joined the Ionian rebels in marching to the Persian governor's seat in Sardis, putting it to the torch. The Persians eventually crushed the revolt in 495 BC and discovered Miltiades' betrayal. He was forced to flee to Athens where he was elected one of its ten generals. The Persians determined to punish Athens for aiding the Ionians and sent a punitive expedition which landed on the plain of Marathon north of Athens in 490 BC. The Athenians marched out with a force of about 10,000 hoplites, armored heavy infantry with no cavalry or archers. They faced a Persian force of at least 25,000 infantry plus thousands of archers and 1,000 cavalry. Number 5. Winning an upset victory at Marathon Faced with the Persians' numerical superiority at Marathon, the Athenians who had 10 generals and a rotating command system, by which each held command for a day, wavered. For over a week they simply watched the Persians from heights overlooking the plain, until Miltiades turned to take command. He convinced a closely divided war council to give battle, Descending from the heights, Miltiades assembled the army with reinforced flanks and a weakened center, and advanced. Once they got within Persian archery range, Miltiades ordered his men to charge a full run. They rapidly closed the distance and smashed into the more lightly armed Persians. The Athenians' reinforced flanks pushed back their opposition. They then wheeled inwards to attack the Persian center, which panicked, broke and fled in a rout to the safety of their beached ships. It was a stunning victory with the Athenians and their allies losing about 200 dead to the Persians 6,400. Number 4. Athens' Stunning Ingratitude Following his brilliant victory at Marathon, Miltiades returned to Athens in glory. It did not last for long. The following year he led a strong expedition against some Greek islands that had supported the Persians, but bungled it badly and suffered a severe leg into the bargain. Miltiades' defeat seemed so absurd to the Athenians that they figured it could only be explained by deliberate treachery on his part. His fellow citizens, whom he had so recently saved, put him on trial for treason. He was convicted and sentenced to death, but the sentence was commuted to a heavy fine. 
Miltiades was kept in prison while his family friends scurried to raise the money for the fine and died in lockup when his leg wound became infected. Number 3. Ancient Egypt's Warrior Queen Ahope I, flourished 16th century BC, whose name means the moon is satisfied, was a warrior queen of ancient Egypt's 17th dynasty. She led armies in combat against the Hyksos, Midic invaders who had conquered Lower Egypt. Ahope took control of Egypt's throne and military after her husband was killed fighting the invaders and ruled as regent during the minority of her son Amos I. She kept up the pressure against the Hyksos until her son was old enough to take over the fight. Astele records her deeds. The king's wife, the noble lady who knew everything, assembled Egypt. She looked after what her sovereign had established. She guarded it. She assembled her fugitives. She brought together her deserters. She pacified her upper Egyptians. She subdued her rebels. She is the one who has accomplished the rights and taken care of Egypt. She has looked after her soldiers. She has guarded her. She has brought back her fugitives and collected together her deserters. She has pacified Upper Egypt and expelled her rebels. Number two, saving her son's throne. When a hope's son came of age. He took the reins of power, chased out the Hyksos, and reunified Egypt, as Amosai he went on to found the 18th dynasty, during which the Egyptian empire reached its zenith, stretching from Syria in the north to Nubia in the south, and from Mesopotamia in the west to the Libyan deserts in the west. Hyksos sympathizing rebels attempted to seize the throne, while Ahope's son was busy in the south warring with Nubians, so she rallied loyal troops, personally led them in fighting off the rebels, and foiled their attempt, for that she was rewarded with the Golden Flies of Valor, Ancient Egypt's highest military award for courage, the Pharaoh's version of America's Medal of Honor or Britain's Victoria Cross, it was discovered in her tomb, along with weapons and jewelry, thousands of years later. Number 1. The Civil War's Greatest Nurse During the American Civil War, Mary Ann Bickerdyke, 1817-1901, served as a nurse and hospital administrator for the Union Army, she helped establish hundreds of field hospitals for the wounded and sick, and after the war spent decades helping veterans and their families secure their pensions. Her deep concern for and tireless efforts on the soldiers' behalf earned her the nickname Mother Bickerdyke from the Men in Blue, and won the admiration of many of their commanders, including U.S. Grant and William Tecumseh Sherman. Born and raised in Ohio, Bickerdyke was one of the first women to attend Oberlin College. She eventually settled in Illinois, where she made a living as a botanic physician and a provider of alternative medicines, using plants and herbs, that skill set served her well during the Civil War.